Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Bridge webinar. Our, speaker today's, our speakers today are Keith and John from Cleveland Electric Laboratories. They're going to speak to us about their fiber optic uh, technology used for bridge monitoring. Um, their clients include several DOTs, the Federal Highway Administration, and prominent civil engineering firms. The presentation will also cover some structures that are currently being monitored. There'll be some case studies, and you'll get to view the, the interface that they've developed and that they use. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat box. And at the end of the presentation, we'll circle back and we'll answer your questions. Uh, also, as a side note, if you are viewing the webinar from your personal computer, an attendance sheet will automatically be generated for you. If you're in a conference room, in order to get an attendance sheet, uh, attendance certificate, that is, please fill out the sign-in sheet and send that to Crystal Downey of uh, Baker Training. Without any further ado, I'd like to turn things over to Keith and John and, uh, and let them begin the webinar. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for attending today's webinar, and a special thank you to Ed for organizing today's event. <laughs> today's topics will include a brief company overview, some background on fiber optics, and two case studies. The first case study is our flagship, the Indian River Inlet Bridge, located in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. This was a new construction cable state bridge and a design-build effort led by Skanska and AECOM with a minimum 100-year design life. The project was tasked as a design to be a comprehensive structural health monitoring system and to better understand the bridge's behavior and aid in the long-term maintenance and operation of the structure. CEL, along with the University of Delaware Center for Innovative Bridge Engineering, developed the concepts and design for this innovative, robust fiber optic monitoring system versus conventional systems. The intent was to provide quantitative data on long-term performance, which was to augment traditional inspection. A new construction project usually presents itself with challenges, and this one did not disappoint. Additionally, the SHM system proved instrumental to the Delaware DOT during Hurricane Sandy. Our second case study will be the I-20 bridge located in Vicksburg, Mississippi. This was an existing steel truss bridge over the Mississippi River with a critical fault line passing between two piers. Partners included the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Mississippi and Louisiana DOTs, and was funded by the Department of Defense. CEL has been around since 1920. Our corporate headquarters are located in Twinsburg, Ohio, and we were serving originally the high temperature needs, those above 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, for markets and industries such as aerospace, steel, glass, and heat treating. In 2004, our VP, Roger Shepard, started the Advanced Technologies Group in Tempe, Arizona, with a small but talented staff focused on the design and fabrication for turbine engine test cell instrumentation. Shortly after that, this group of engineers began to develop fiber optic sensing technologies. They saw significant advantages for many applications as compared to conventional analog sensors. We were then partnered with Keith Chandler from Chandler Handling Chandler Monitoring Systems. Today, this team has deployed fiber optic systems around the world in many different markets, including oil and gas, mining, civil engineering, and security. Your initial question might be, why choose a fiber optic system? Well, for starters, maybe you aren't aware virtually any physical parameter can be measured with fiber optics, including, but not limited to, temperature, movement, pressure, sound, vibration, and even intrusion. However, there are really two main advantages versus conventional methods that perhaps over time you have grown more comfortable with. The first, immunity to noise. This leads to a much cleaner measurement data. The second, significantly easier to install. There's no cabling, conduits, data loggers, and junction boxes that are in the system and they can be greatly reduced. No power is necessary at the sensor locations themselves. So what are fiber optics and FBGs exactly? At a high level, 
Fiber brag gratings, commonly referred to as FBGs, are a well-established technology and internationally proven. Additionally, fiber optic sensors are easily multiplexed. What does that mean? Several can be strung along a single mode fiber, including mixing sensor types. Now, Keith Chandler will go into a greater explanation of how FPGs work. As John had mentioned, <clears throat> the areas that we've been involved in, uh, the maturity of optics and optical interrogators and sensors have come a long ways over the last 15 years. Uh, in addition, we've also developed uh, uh, quite a bit of software uh, with some very powerful uh, SQL databases. And as you know today, a lot of um, uh, talk is going on about the Internet of Things. And I'll describe how we can use fiber optics in this ring. This is a comparison between analog and FPGs, it's very short, uh, but on the far left-hand side, you see where there's 400 wired electrical strain sensors. This is a real applications on aircraft uh, wings uh, to understand uh, their strength. In the middle here, you see a, a fiber optic system with 640 multiplex fiber optic strain sensors. And simply, we do not have to have multiple uh, DAC units or multiplexers to accomplish the high number. Um, a lot of the advantages is uh, what John had mentioned earlier, is being able to have up to 50 sensors on one single fiber. So this is a multiplexer just like you would use a telecommunication system. And this is the interrogator for the optics. And then there's a PC and a remote um, a login device, a modem. So the fiber that's within this jacketed um, optical cable uh, is what you see here. It's 126 microns uh, in diameter with a 9 micron core. Um, you know, some of the advantages also is the calibration. The calibrations of optical systems are uh, once you uh, set these uh, initial zeros, it's not anything that you have to worry about drift over long, long periods of time. Uh, whereas with analog, uh, there's the environmental effects on cabling, conduits, and uh, connections uh, can have an effect on that calibration. <clears throat> 